the world of street and trail motorcycles is separated into two equally yet important groups. ATV riders who purchase extremely large motorcycles with their life savings, and dual sport riders who fall down a lot. These are their stories. Hello fellow island riders. Glad to have you along for the adventure again today. Today, we're picking it up here in South Winslow. And today the idea is going to be to get a bite to eat. <laughs> really, um, nothing too, too complicated until it becomes complicated, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, we're headed out to Oyster Bed. And uh, plan is to get out there via the Red Isle ATV truck. We should be getting a little bit close here to where we want to be. Yeah, there we go. So, this is the McGinnis Road uh, entry point. Well, actually, it's just, you know, a point between points, really. Um, you can jump into the Red Isle ATV Club Trail from a lot of different sections if you're a... Uh, of the dual sport persuasion <laughs> but this is the one i've chosen primarily because uh i've gone through from toy master motorsports check out toy master motorsports they sell some good atvs <laughs> and really uh there's a huge mud hole there and i had i tried it at one time i was coming up through lunch time here and i just had to turn around there was no way no way it was going to happen also this section if you do drop in uh local island riders uh, make sure you just idle through here eh? because this is all horses and stuff you don't want to spook them up and sometimes you don't know some people could be riding um, through on the trails so you just kind of want to keep it nice and quiet and chill i know you want to rock that berm right out but once you get clear it's okay to come on to her a little bit but uh yeah let's see here i'm gonna come around this and put my trail lights on. And I think I'm gonna kick down, actually, because it is a scorcher. It's getting getting really hot. And I'll tell you right now, I uh, I don't ride these trails with a full with full gear on because I just die heat stroke. All right. Let's get moving before you get too hot there, Foxy boy. So yeah. We're gonna have to stay a little bit frosty today because it's a beautiful day. And um, that means that there is going to be uh, lots of ATVers on the trail, lots of dirt bikes on the trail. So we gotta be really mindful and cognizant of that. Because if we come around one of these turns too fast and we don't see them coming, it's uh, Night, night. Good night, sweet prince. It's also worth mentioning, I'm kind of doing this on expert mode too. <laughs> what I mean by expert mode is that the Shinkos are on their last little bit of life. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I got a new, I got a new pair of Shinkos actually sitting in the garage. Can you believe it took me a month to get them? Oh my goodness! I put an order in, but it didn't pan out. But luckily, my boy Mitch saved me. He had a set sitting around the garage. I was able to pick them up. Actually, let's let's take a quiet around this turn here. Check through. Looks good. Go. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. Such a cool trail system, man. Check it, check it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't lose the line there, Dowski.
So another thing I wanted to talk about here today while I was on the trails is, uh, and I might have alluded to it earlier, but who knows? I've, I've talked about it before in other videos, but I really feel like ride styles on bikes like this shouldn't be labeled too much. And what I mean by labeling is like, oh, you know, you're a dual sport rider or you're an ADB rider. I mean, that's definitely a ride style, but I don't know. I'm on the fence as to whether or not, like, I don't like labeling things too much. Here's why, here's why. Because say you own a KLR 650 or say you own a Tiger or say you own like an Africa Twin. Does that mean you're not a dual sport rider? I don't think so. You know, I think, oh yeah, there we go. I think that you're the kind of rider that rides how you ride, you know? I mean, anytime you start to label things like that, you start to devalue a little bit of what your machine is capable of and you kind of devalue the adventure a little bit too. Heads up, nice and soft here. Oh, I thought I heard something, all right. Ooh, nice little narrow bridge. Yeah, I'm getting off topic. Hang tight, I'm gonna stay a little bit frosty here. All right, we're cool. Hit that again, maybe. There we go. Yeah, that was greasy. Anyway. So, like I was saying, I mean, dual sport, ADV, no matter how you ride, the purpose is not how you ride, it's how you adventure. You know, if you get your adventure in by being out here in the woods, that's amazing. If you get your adventure in by being out on the asphalt and exploring new places that, you know, a bike might take you down a fire road, that's also great. Because I think what ends up happening is you know, you get a beautiful adventure bike or you get a wicked dual sport bike and then you ride it on the asphalt and then you feel kind of guilty. Like, oh, well, you know what? I should be riding this thing right out on the trails. You know, giving her hell. But that's not true. I mean, you don't need to do anything you don't want to do. Oh, cutting. And yeah, like I know sometimes when I first started riding on the KLR, like I felt like, ooh, get into gear, buddy. You got such too soft a tap on the foot. Check through, good. I felt like, yeah, a little guilty just riding on the asphalt all the time, but in reality, I shouldn't because that's adventure too. That's you getting out there, past your comfort zone, trying to find something you never would have done before. And that's what matters. So I wanna just take a moment and to all those who said to themselves today, maybe, you know, as you were riding on the asphalt, I should be riding on the dirt. I should be on the gravel. You should be riding how you wanna ride, brother and sisters. <laughs> you know, don't let a label tell you how to ride your bike. Let adventure tell you how to ride your bike. Let your bike take you to the other side of your comfort zone and let it bring you back with memories that are worth smiling about later on. That's what it's all about. And that's all I got to say about that. In the words of Box Chocolates. <laughs> yeah! Man, I love these trails. Man, we should be getting close to Mama's now. What's that? Come around in a second, kick the foot out. Yeah. Awesome. I'll say the one cool thing about the Shinkos being on their last few hundred kilometers is that <laughs> they do blast right out along the sides, and that's fun. Lunch is coming. Actually, you know what? I'm more excited the fact that we actually met our objective this time around. Whoa. 
I gotta reset. Oh yes, I remember this. Travis, if you're watching, this is the part where I drove right off the road and into that tree. <laughs> That was a good time. That was when Travis first sherped me through this trail. But yeah, totally target fixated on that tree and just went right into it. Oh, big stumpies here. The tire poppers. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we made it. Sweet. There it is. Wasn't that other house? That one. Sweet. I wonder if there's anybody out. I might actually see if I can hook up with a group after lunch. Oh, that doesn't look like there's anybody there. Oh yeah, there's one guy. We'll see what they say. Let's get a bite. I'm going for another rip bud. Only. Cool down there, Foxy boy. You're running hot, buddy. You're running hot. Delicious and bad. Well, that was delicious. However, it is time to hit the road again. So, I think the plan is gonna be to drop in off Brackley Road. Because, just need a little focus there. Um, I can't really identify the connector. And do a gear check. Oh, we're good. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I can't find a connector. On satellite. And I just asked uh, a couple of folks that were there who had just come in from Toy Master. And uh, they didn't know either. But I know it exists. I know you can run the whole thing out. And it's really cool. But I am going to stick to what I know and get the mission accomplished instead of getting lost like crazy like last time. There we go. I should be able to just take a right here and scoot on down the road a little bit hook ourselves back up. All right, let's stay frosty a little bit here. I think it's up here on our... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How about we do this? Let's get up here. Because if I'm correct, this is the entry point that we said we were going to take. But that's back there is where you come out. So let's do a little bit of investigating. Let's find this connector, eh? Yeah, look at that. We could at least come down through here and see what it looks like. I mean, if it's too dicey, she's too dicey and we'll just come back. Oh yeah, show mucky right side. Stay on here. Oh yeah, look at that old dump. That would have been a mess, but look how low it is, eh? That's dried out a lot. Same here, look at this. This would have been a mess. Ah, yeah. This looks like Ross working, cutting around. So I'm gonna take through there. Oh, boys. Go slow, go slow. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, stalled her. She don't like tree branch, do you? Yeah, that looks like Ross doing some work to cut around the problem. I think people are going around it to kind of fix that. All right, let's keep trucking along. Oh, wow, very, very chill. Super cool. Yeah, man, this is all dried right out. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. <laughs> I think I see where it connects. I think I found her. A little bit of soup here, a little bit of soups. Must be close to that connector by now, eh? Oh, here we go. So you do ride a little road, eh? And there, is that McKenna? That's McKenna's road right there. Yeah, okay, I get her, I get her, I get her now. Is I telling you not to go through there? It would make sense. All right, well, you know what? Let's double back and we'll, uh, we'll hook back onto Brackley. 